Shalom, this is your arc. Y'all is magnified. Coming back with another informative video. I titled this video, The Importance of Jurisdiction. But before I tackle this subject, as always, I must state for the record, I'm not a lawyer, I do not practice law, and I do not pretend to. All my videos are for informational and educational purposes only. They're all facts and all truth. Nothing more, nothing less. So with that being said, now let's get to it. Okay, so now, again, before you all go into these courts filing your claim, especially on the federal side, make sure you know the importance and the understanding of what jurisdiction is. A court must have jurisdiction in order to hear your complaint. If the court does not, uh, does not have jurisdiction, then they cannot hear your complaint. Okay, they will throw your complaint out for failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. And also they will uh, throw your claim out for uh, um, um, the Lamp Amendment sovereign immunity. Okay, that the states have in federal court. Now, I've been asking this question to all the gurus out there that claim that you can go in federal court and win. Uh, suing the state in federal court. I asked over and over and over again to show proof. There have not been no proof. So that argument is done and over with now. You know, but as I provided multiple proof of guys going in there losing left and right. But can nobody show me proof of one case winning? Just one case. Just one. That's all I asked for. Just one case. They can't show one case, man. If that's not a red flag, I don't know what is. But with that being said, though, let's pick up where at the top where it says jurisdiction. It says the word is a term of large and comprehensive importance and embraces every kind of jurisdictional actions. So now, the, uh, every action brought into a court, that court must have jurisdiction over. If that court does not have jurisdiction over, then th that case is going to get thrown out immediately. Why? Because the court doesn't have the ability to hear the case or to make a ruling on it because they don't have jurisdiction over the matter. But let's continue. It is the authority by which courts and judicial officers take connivance of and decide cases. So again, again, a case, a, a court cannot decide the case without having jurisdiction. Okay? So, it needs to have jurisdiction in order to decide the case. But let's stroll up. It says, top line, it is the authority, capacity, power, or right to act. So without jurisdiction, the court does not have authority, they does not have capacity, they do not have power, and they do not have right to act if the court does not have jurisdiction. So you can bring a claim that you can be right about all day long. But if you bring it into the wrong court, it's going to get thrown out. Why? Because they cannot hear the matter. They do not have authority to hear the matter. They, they do not have the capacity to hear the matter. And they do not have the power or the right to act against that claim that you bring into the court. No matter how right that you claim you are, they, if they don't have jurisdiction, they can't hear it. Let's continue at the top line where it says Curry. It says Curry. Curry into execution or enforce sentence, judgment, or decree, right? So basically stating that they don't have, if without jurisdiction, or they need jurisdiction to do these things. If they don't have jurisdiction, then they cannot do those things. Plain and simple, simple and plain. So now with that being said, we're going to go to uh, this video real quick. I want y'all to hear and pay close attention to what's being said so you all can get understanding of what's really going on. Okay? So with that being said, let's go there. It's not state. The reason why people are catching hell when they're going to federal courts now, which we just understood, is because this is messing with the federal judge's money now, too. They're not dismissing it because we're wrong. They're dismissing it because, guess what? They know that we're right. And if they go along with it, you know, they're going to get jacked up. Okay? We've got... Okay, so now, as you just heard, this fool just say, this guy, man, he lost his mind, man. But let's continue. The dude said that they're not dismissing the cases 
because you all are right, I mean, because you all are wrong, but they're dismissing the case because they are affecting the federal judge's money. The federal judge is going to get paid no matter what. If you win the suit or you lose the suit, you're not affecting his money. He's going to get paid no matter what. That's what you don't understand. And not only that, the reason why you're losing is not whether you're right or wrong. You can be right or you can be wrong. If the court doesn't have jurisdiction to hear the matter, as we just read it in the definition, then the case is going to get thrown out of court. But not only that, now let's listen to his client. He's going to bring one of his clients on here who he's supposed to be helping in federal court. Now let's see what they tell his client. The same thing that they not tell everybody else's client. The same thing. But let's continue. Hold on. Plenty of cases pending in federal court. All right? And just because they make a decision that you don't agree with, you you, you are free to appeal, okay, with the certain... Okay, so he, had, so he said that they have plenty of cases pending in federal court. He don't say they have plenty of cases winning in federal court. It's a difference between pending and winning, okay? Every case he went into federal court, he lost every one of them. If, hey, trying to prove me wrong and show one he won. That's it. If he can't do that, then, hey, I stand true. What it say? An unrebutted fact stands as true. Okay, it, he cannot rebut me and show me where he actually went into the court and won a federal lawsuit. None of these cats can. No, no, they just all bark and no bite. They all bark and no bite. They can't not, they're not about that action for real. They losing in court left and right. But let's continue. Circuit court. Trust me, for a sororia. All right, I'm, I'm not going to go into what that word means. Now, I'm going to unloose everybody's mic. Okay, don't forget to record it. So let's see here. Okay, there we go. Now let's see if we can get this thing going. Carmen, can you hear me? Demond, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Any questions? Nope, not sure. Okay, now Demond, we have we have a case pending, is that correct? Yep. Okay. Okay, so him and Demond has a case pending. Hey, DeMond, you lost already. I'm telling you up front, you already lost. You already received your response that you lost. It's over with for you and your case. You know, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's better that you hear from me first. But you already heard it. They already responded back to your complaint. But let's find out what they said about your complaint. But let's continue. Now, a lot of responses. All right. Now, if you don't mind, let everybody know. Did the state not try to, did the, the, the defendants not try to wiggle out? Yeah, they did a 12B failure to state a claim the first time I put my stuff in. Okay, so you heard that. The first time he put his stuff in, they said they put a 12B failure to state a claim. They're going to do that. Why? Because they don't have the federal court do not have jurisdiction. I keep telling y'all, everybody's going into the court trying to file these federal lawsuits are receiving the same thing. It's, it's embarrassing, you know. Stop going to these federal courts, you know. So, demand. You know you already lost, buddy. You know you, you you already lost, man. But let's continue. Hold on. Was, was the claim valid? We have a valid claim, did we not? It doesn't matter if you have a valid claim or an invalid claim. They cannot hear the case. <laughs> what does he not want? That's what he don't understand. The federal courts cannot hear the case. They do not have jurisdiction to hear your lawsuit brought against the state. Why? Because the 11th Amendment, sovereign immunity, bars that suit. But let's continue. Yes. Okay. Now, so everybody can know, when you if you decide to sue in federal court, number one, federal jurisdiction, I'm going to show you this, too. Check this out. Give me one second. I'm going to pause the screen for a hot second. And I'm going to pull up. What's his name here? I'm going to get my internet to act right. Come on, you. All right. Are you sorry? All right, hold on. Okay, I'll open a new tab here. Okay. The first thing they're going to come back and do is they're going to come back and say, well, um, you know, federal courts can't go against uh, the jurisdiction of state courts in a family law matter. Okay. 
Now, did he just not admit the exact same thing I've been telling y'all? That's the first they're going to. That's the first thing they're going to say, and they're going to throw the case out immediately. So why do he keep having people going there doing the same thing when he know exactly what they're going to say? Why? That's why he can't provide one proof of somebody winning in court, in federal court. He cannot show proof of that. Nobody can. See, what he want to do is go into court, have y'all argue that y'all, uh, that y'all constitutional rights was infringed upon, but then he don't want to admit that the state also has, uh, by, by the constitution, the same constitution he's trying to say they infringed on his rights, but he don't want to accept the fact that the state also have sovereign immunity underneath that same constitution. You just can't pick up, you can't pick and choose what you want to believe and what you don't want to believe. The rules are the rules. If you have constitutional rights and, and the state have constitutional rights, which is the 11th Amendment that they cannot be sued, then like you want them to honor your constitutional rights, then they also have to honor the state's constitutional rights. The exact same thing. Okay? It's all corporations. That's it. We're all fictions. If you choose to be anyways. So always China's jurisdiction. But let's continue. Family law is equity law. Equity has nothing to do with law. It, has, it deals with the sphere of morals. Nothing judicial. Nothing jural. Alright, hold on. Let's see here. Um, Google. I'm going to pull up Title 14 of the Social Security Okay, and I'm going to show you. Okay. There we go. We're going to pull up 460 grants. Now, what do that say at the top? Let's read this slow. Civil actions to enforce support obligations. The key word is enforce. They enforce what? Support obligations. This does not say civil actions to bring a, uh, uh, a claim against the state and federal court. It doesn't say that. But he claims that this gives you right to go into court and file a lawsuit, a federal lawsuit against the state. This guy's lost his mind, man. When I put that, when I put that paperwork up, when I put that with that website, uh, uh, Ohio website, when I uh, put up sue the state in the state, it clearly states that this court has jurisdiction to hear all matters against the state, uh, or in, in all civil matters against the state for for damages done. That's how you know the court waves when, when the state waves his arm and immunity because he allows himself to be sued. Nothing on this. Right here, or nothing on the screen says anything about the state waiving its immunity to be sued. The guy lost his mind. He don't know. How, he don't know what he's dealing with. He's dealing with. Hey, hey, I'm not gonna say much. Let's let's finish listening there. District courts of the United States shall have jurisdiction without regard to any amount in controversy to hear and determine any civil action certified by who the Secretary of the Health and Human Services. Now, do that say anything about suing the state? But he think this gives the state jurisdiction. I mean, he think this gives the federal courts jurisdiction to sue the state. It's not going to work. You don't have the right to bring the state into a uh, federal court unless the state voluntarily waived their sovereign immunity. And the state did not voluntarily waive their sovereign immunity to be sued in federal court. Okay? But they did in state court. And I'm going to show y'all a different state this time. So with that being said, let's go there. Okay, so now, let's pick this up at the top. It says state immunity, the 11th Amendment. The 11th Amendment limits private actions brought against states in federal court. Its full text provides the judicial powers of the United States shall not be construed to extend to any suit in law or equity commenced or prosecuted against one of the United States by citizens of another state 
or by citizens or subjects of any foreign state. But let's continue. The 11th Amendment was ratified in 1798 in order to overrule the Supreme Court decision that a South Carolina citizen could sue the state of Georgia for money damages. Charleston versus Georgia. Right? Then it says this decision caused uproar amongst the states because it infringed on the sovereignty of the state, which was supposed to have been retained in the Constitution. Shortly thereafter, the amendment was passed. The 11th Amendment prevents federal courts from exercising jurisdiction over state defendants. The federal court will not even hear the case if a state is the defendant. How many times do I have to say this? This is getting bad, man. Let's continue. A state may not be sued in federal court by its own citizens or a citizen of another state unless the state consents to jurisdiction. What they're not going to do. Let's continue. Consent to jurisdiction of the federal court may be manifested by the state voluntarily appearing in the court to defend itself on the merits of the case. Right? More case law to back this up. The 11th Amendment immunity extends to suits filed against the state and state courts and before federal administrative agencies. Let's continue. More case law to back that up. Unless the state or federal government creates an exception to the state's sovereign immunity, the state is immune from being sued without consent by any citizen in federal courts, state courts, or before federal administrative agencies. Now, please somebody show me where the state waived their sovereign immunity to be uh, sued in federal court. Please show me. They won't be able to show me. But now let's go to where the state waives its sovereign immunity to be sued in state courts. Let's go there. Okay, so this is for all my people in North Carolina. I already threw one out for uh, the people in uh, the state of Ohio. Now we're doing this in North Carolina. Okay, so as you, all, as you all can see, this is Article 31, tort claims against the state departments and agencies, right? Subsection uh, 143-291, Industrial Commission constituted a court to hear and determine claims, damages, liability insurance in lieu of obligation under the article, right? A, so all my people in North Carolina, it's for y'all. The North Carolina Industrial Commission is hereby constituted a court for the purpose of hearing and passing upon tort claims against the State Board of Education, the Board of Transportation, and all other departments, institutions, and agencies of the state. So no agency is 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 uh is uh immune from this. All agencies fall into just the same thing. But let's continue. It says the Industrial Commission shall determine whether or not each individual claim arose as a result of the negligence of an officer, employee, and voluntary servant or agent of the state while acting within the scope of his office, employment, service, agency, or authority under circumstances where the state of North Carolina, if a private person, would be liable to claim it in accordance with the laws of, the, of North Carolina. So again, this brings the state on the same playing field as any individual, any person, you know. So you can bring a suit against them, but do it in the state. Again, stay away from federal courts. This is two states I showed y'all. Clear cut, straight to the point, telling you all that you can file your suits into these state courts against the state to get the state to waive its immunity. There's no uh, uh, law that anybody can pull up that states that the federal courts have ju this federal court has jurisdiction over a state to hear laws against the state or to hear a suit against the state. No. Only how a federal court can hear a suit against the state if the state voluntarily waives its sovereign immunity, which a state will not voluntarily do to be sued. If you had sovereign immunity, would you voluntarily waive your sovereign immunity to be sued in a court that they know they can't sue you in? No, you won't. You see? So they set up courts in the state so the state can be sued. Find your state courts. Sue them. If you all need my help, hit me up in my email at yahismagnified at gmail.com. For all my people out there fighting, continue to fight. I'd like to thank all my subscribers for watching. All those who really rocking out with me, man. And those who seeking this truth. The truth shall make you free. Okay? 
I don't have to come up here and try to make something say something it's not saying. You all can read for yourself. Okay? So again, anybody who think you can go in federal court and win, show me one lawsuit with somebody won in federal court showing the state. Until then, case closed. So with that being said, you all be blessed again. Uh, uh, shalom.